In this video, we will see how to update the firmware for the Itachi Energy Maker IEDs. Mainly, the Relion 67650 platform IEDs can be updated with this procedure. Um, previously, these IED types were managed by ABB High Voltage Business Unit. So, to make it more easier, let's go from the Itachi Energy website. Why do we need to update the, the firmware for the IEDs? Depending on the environment where the IEDs are used, it's very important to make it uh, to the latest version to get the maximum benefit. How do we know the, the maximum benefit which has been included in the latest version of uh, IEDs? Once you visit the Om Itachi Energy webpage, you go to the product and solutions in the main menu. And there you see the substation automation protection and control um, sub menu after the selection you select uh, the substation automation products under the offering category there you can see the really on um, serious ids further you can click that and then just scroll down and there you can see the the recently released um, release notes that are for the different um, versions of the Reliant family. So let me select the recently released um, um, documentation. So that's about um, 2.2.6 version, um, which is an upgrade for the 2.2.5, which is an existing version. So currently, um, we could able to update uh, to the latest version. So from this document, we can understand easily the documentation has been released on this particular date. That means um, two months ago from the date uh, at the moment. And here you can see the, the new features and the announcements, um, also the improvements part of this particular version. So this is applicable for many different product types, not only um, single product type like REB670. There are a couple of announcement um, applicable for many different product types part of their 670 series uh, family. And there are many different um, improvements related to protection, control, um, Cyber security as well, and there are several improvements which we can go through slowly, including the communication enhancement for the SNMP, for example, and syslog for the security events and the configuration changes, and many different updates that we can able to make use of it. So in my case, I used to manage this IED in our um, Omicron Academy background office, so it's important to um, keep it up to date for our training and development to the customers in the region, so for the webinar and events uh, that we do make use of it to explain the different application part of protection control and automation side. How do you get the, the update package, also the FST and the instruction manual? So you go back to the, um, the Itachi Energy website, there you can see an option to contact us at the end of the web page where you can fill your company information correctly. Um, as an end user, you can write, um, pick the right selection in products and system and which type of um, ID type that you have. So in our case is substation automation system. Then you can write your message, particularly the ordering number, serial number, the project where the IDs are used. They can um, send a request uh, from this uh, level and, and the Hitachi Energy customer care center team member used to respond to you as soon as possible for your request. So in my case, I already sent uh, the support request and already got the, the update package. So the update package um, include um, the FST, the latest version of FST, uh, the field service tool, which is a, a software application which need to be installed on the Windows PC, allow us to uh, manage the different uh, update and upgrade packages for the Reliance 6650 ITs. 
there you can also see there is another um, installer um, that's a update package for um, the id that i have in my setup and you also get the the instruction manual how we need to manage uh, the update and upgrade for the ids the user manual is very simple to use it to read it through the most important point is um, it's important to take the backup of the project so basically the backup can be um, easily exported um, from the id level but it's always recommended to export from the, the project level so you can always um, select the project and then export the project to make sure that you have the complete information about uh, the whole um, project including the specific id so i have already taken the project backup or you can able to exp export from the file menu and you can also make sure that you convert the previously used um, uh, PCM 600 projects from the older version to the PCM 600 version 3.0 because when we do update um, to the latest version you can already see here the PCM 600 3.0 and the, the connectivity package 4.0 is required to communicate with 2.2.6 um, ID version of uh, really on 670, 650 and some 600 IO ID types. So I have already updated um, the PCM 600 and migrated my project, basically converted from the previous version to the latest version. So the connectivity packages are up to date um, from the update manager. So the installer are available with us and it has been installed already and you can already see by going to the C drive there you can see the Itachi folder and there you see the ID service tools and this is a field service tool and this is a base software on top of it we need the id update package or upgrade package and the update package also install the required files here this has been very well explained in the instruction manual um, another important point is on top of taking the project backup so or the id backup it's also important to isolate the id from the the network which means we should not perform the id update or upgrade in a live environment that means um, if the IDs is connected to the energized bay it's important to um, de-energize the bay and then make sure that you disconnect the communication cable because when we do perform the update um, the configuration go to default state which may create some um, abnormal scenarios in the real network that's the reason it's highly recommended to um, isolate the id uh, from the real network that you have in your setup in my case it's a small test setup for the training purpose so i'm good to go to proceed for the update so the installer is already available i just install and i have connected um, my testing pc uh, basically where i have installed the field service tool um, that particular pc having the usb to ethernet which has been connected to the front port of the um, already 670 and the ip address also assigned um, to the static ip address in a similar range the default ip address of the front port is 10.1.150.3 um, so i already assigned in the similar range as per the guideline and another important information is um, in the id lhmi menu you go inside the the different menus maybe for this purpose i will use uh, another id which i already updated so you also get uh, the support to communicate um, the id from your engineering pc or testing pc which enable you to perform uh, the monitoring diagnostic of your id from the remote uh, hmi this is um, available for latest version of 2.2.5 firmware and then from 2.2.6 onwards it's um, available part of the firmware update 
So you go under the configuration menu, then the communication inside uh, the cyber security. There is a sub menu called FST access. So by default, it was off. This is another ID. I have taken um, remote desktop connection to another PC where the ID is connected from the back side. This is just to explain um, using another ID in the setup how you can traverse to the menu to enable this option. So you have to enable this option and then go to the Ethernet configuration, front port, and the access point front side, and you also need to enable the FST access to make sure that the field uh, service tool can able to access to the ID to update the softwares. And the TLS version can be managed if you have 2.5 ID. You can also manage it under the Ethernet subsecurity authentication. There you can also control the TLS version to make it 1.2 only to perform the update as per the guideline. So these are the, the information which has been very well defined in the instruction manual. To proceed further, let's start with um, FST update. Another reason to update not only the, the enhancement, um, the improvements, it's also important to make sure that uh, the IDs which are used in the network are not vulnerable to the cyber attacks. So to make sure that we also get to know this um, information, let's select the cyber security menu under the products and solutions and there you can scroll down and then select um, the cyber security alerts and notification so pick the read more option and by scroll down you can see the the different um, cyber security adversaries and notification that are part of uh, the different product types um, from itach energy managed um, tools and IDs. Um, so in my case, we have a 670 ID and you just you can find. So here is one um, advisory which has been released um, two months ago. I can open it to know about the cybersecurity um, problems of this particular adversary. So this is related to open SSL vulnerability, part of the the whole relay on high voltage product apps. And here is the the summary and, and the guideline also available here. Sometime um, the vulnerability in most of the cases uh, okay this is related to the TLS connection. Uh, Sometimes the vulnerabilities are fixed in the firmers. Um, which has been also mentioned here, what are the affected version like from 2.0 onwards, and we have seen many different product types also affected, including the 2.0.5, which we have currently in our setup. So let's right click the ID, go to the ID summary. So this is the PCM 600 configuration. Let's do online read to get the ID summary quickly from the ID so that we get the latest information. So we have 2.2.5 RAD 670. So it's also affected um, part of this vulnerability um, report. And let's do update. Sometimes you also can get the latest uh, fixes when there is a solution available for this particular problem. At the moment, uh, the general recommendation is explained here. Most of the cases, um, the security issues, part of the protocols and services are used in the IEDs has been fixed in the firmware. So it's always uh, recommended to update to the latest version whenever there is a chance to update our IEDs part of the critical infrastructures where we use uh, to protect uh, the different assets and applications in the power grids mainly. So let's close this. You can also export as a PDF about the ID summary data. Okay, close from this level. 
we know the id type now okay let's start with um, fst update from the start menu you can just type um, fail service tool which allow us to update it to make sure that we have a connection to the id let's ping the id okay it's communicating from the pc then under the connection menu select setup and then choose the default ip address you can also customize it depending on the requirement and then from the file menu just select the open package there you see the default location we have um, already installed the update pack upgrade package for our id so just need to select the folder and then select the upgrade option and the id is already communicated well and read the available information from the id the previously we have installed on the id with 2.2.5 version and we already read the serial number you can say okay here from here on the the first update um, starts the pre-check is done already now the package has been verified the verification is under progress and it's done and the because this is just to make sure that um, the package has been code signed by the authorized um, company and the team. So this is basically the Itachi Energy um, development team who create the, the firmware, the ID update package, and then um, add the official uh, digital signature. To make sure that the um, tool doesn't allow third party or unsigned update package to update it. So the ID update is um, progress. So it's important to um, not to disconnect uh, the cable or we also make sure that you have enough charge on your PC where you use it to update the ID. So currently the num 2 module is uh, updating with the FPGA. So there are several modules like LHMI and everything will get updated one by one and you can also see the different um, lines which shows uh, the, the current status or exactly uh, the update is in progress and you also get to know the overall progress in the last line So there are several uh, improvements and benefits you also get part of this update including the the RIA 600 which you can download it from the the Itachi Energy website maybe I can also show you quickly in the meantime so you can visit the Itachi Energy Grid Automation Software Library then use your company email address then sign in there you can see the different um, softwares so select the, the library there you can see the latest version of PCM 600 can be downloaded from this level then if you scroll down slowly there you can see the 
real 600 version 1506 so just selecting it and then you get the link to download the the software to connect the the latest version of uh, 670 650 ids only the 670 ids if you have this six firmware The overall update may take a uh, maximum close to 5 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes. Though we have uh, the direct connection from the laptop. So during the update, um, the IDME reboot several times to complete the overall update. And if you are having touch Energy IDs, and then it's also good to know um, touch energy is having now official um, download center um, for the different type of documents, presentation, videos, and contents part of the high voltage um, products. Before it was managed uh, within ABB library, which we know uh, really well. For a long time, we used to get different documents easily. Like by under selecting the expanding the category, we choose the different product types, we can easily manage the different type of documents. So for the future, so you can download all the different type of documents and software, uh, everything from this level. Let's say you need a document, then you can classify the type of document that you are looking for under the category products and different type of IDs, art use, or let's say you are looking for line differential protection, then which type of ID you are looking for. So you can manage the different type of option really well and choose the, the language. I can classify which type of document you all need. You also get to know the the recently released release notes everything once the the, play, the publisher repository managed up to date so i will provide you all these different type of links which i has which i have used it um, this video in the description which you can able to access it to get the benefit Post uh, the successful update, um, we also need to migrate the configuration from the existing PCM600 project because currently the configuration version which we do have is 2.2.5 and we have to migrate it to 2.2.6. So for that, you need to install 2.2.6 um, firmware, I'm sorry, the ID module from the update manager so from the help section you can go to the update manager and select the run as administrator so there you can see in the bottom left of the update manager it should connect to the touch energy server so you can see here git 
software package expanding the 670 series pick the right um, ID tab that you are looking for so in my case it's 6 required I have already installed it um, if you don't have it you need to install the latest contact 4 at 000 then you can also see the latest version is available here and you can also download the documentation which can help you when you have some more clarification required on different topics the pre configuration can also support you to understand the different function blocks how to connect it with an example use case So the ID update is almost um, finished. We are just waiting for the the final result, which we just got it uh, now. So you should be able to see the upgrade end result okay with green color text. Um, and the most important point is we have to send the report, which we do see it here. For example, I just copy. Windows R and then paste this location and here you can see the different um, success message for example in this case I have um, 83433 so this is the the report which we need to send it to the data team so the zip file which we have to send it to this email address why because let's say we have currently um, updated our IDs to the latest version, which is 2.2.6. Let's say there is a newer version of um, update available or upgrade available for this ID type, then you get a notification. And this is to support the product lifecycle from the Itachi Energy. Uh, when there is a new product type available uh, in the market, um, say, for example, in this manual, also we can see here a um, couple of use cases shown. Some okay here. Let's say there is a new model ID coming up in the market uh, as a successor product for this type. Then you can also um, get the update from the Itachi Energy team. That's all idea to manage. Uh, your uh, asset information to to the latest um, available or possible solution from the touch energy so this is how we do update um, the id and send the report back to the touch energy to manage your id um, to the latest um, version Let's try to connect uh, the ID from the PCM600. Before that, we have to perform the ID migration. So let's do the ID migration. So upon right-clicking the ID, you see a migrate configuration option. So you see here 2.2.6 and you can continue. You can always see the backup project is stored here in the repository inside the C program data. Itachi in Itachi PCM database and there you can already see um, a backup created by PCM 600 so the ID migration converts the, the specific ID project from 2.2.5 to 2.2.6 version To come to be uh, compatible with the latest um, ID module and resource files, the ID update package inside the ID. You can already see the ID 
um, prop object property has been changed uh, from 2.2.5 to 2.2.6 and the time step configuration version everything has been changed one by one Post the successful migration, you also get a, a nice uh, report about the, the ID migration. So you can just finish and you can see the report. You can also save this report for your review, what exactly changed, which function instance has been changed in the ID and that you can able to go through later on. So I have saved the report for my review later on. Then I can just say set technical key. And you also see the certificate acceptance. So if you want to accept for the specific session for time being, you can use trust for the session, you can accept for forever for this particular technical key as long as you keep the PCM session open and the certificate will be downloaded to the to the PC. So basically using this option we set the the ID name or the technical key from the PCM 600 to the real ID. Because post the update and the technical key has been changed. Upgrade so it's important to write the correct configuration as per our project. So we got the successfully the technical key has been set. Next, we make sure that the license update to also. Process and then working fine. To make sure that the configuration is inconsistent with the, the ID update. So that we don't see any abnormal behavior when we perform read write when we work with uh, the newly updated IT. And the license update is perfect. There is no problem. We can also use the validate configuration. There is no error. Let's close this configuration. Make sure that we have the the communication definitions are properly managed, so we don't lose any configuration related to the access point and the protocol mapping. Okay, it's this is fine. And um, if you are using the ID and the real project, it make sure that you disable the unused services such as FTP. First access you can disable for sure for the the rear ports and then in case we don't use it um, other protocols like DNP3 and authorized access from remote like rear 600 or SNMP PCM access you can disable it when you don't really um, need it from the rear ports because we manage it very well in the real project for different applications. So you can disable the unused access for the another like unused services. Let me right click and then write to the ID. So we have the, the latest um, project backup loaded to the real ID.
Perform common write uh, is always recommended. Most of the cases when we do change many different information in the communication um, related part, like goes sample value, report control blocks, or application configuration, and many other um, tools require common write. Some of the parameter setting required partial write, which is sufficient. In some cases, it's always um, okay to do the partial write from the parameter setting tool, but common write always make sure that we write uh, the whole configuration um, that we do configure. And there are always um, log parameters. You can always make sure that you enable right information let's right click and go to the id summary then do online read make sure that we have the latest information which we are looking for the 2.2.6 and id 670 and the id name everything looks perfect let's close this and we have the latest firmware as well. And we have already the configuration built for this specific ID. And you can also perform quick check um, after the successful firmware update and upgrade. It's recommended to perform the retest to make sure that the configuration and the functions are uh, working as expected in the real system. Um, so I go to the process based communication. We have the merging unit from Ciprotec 5, uh, which is sending the sample value, and the subscriber is the RD670. The inputs which we can able to see it already here for the subscriber here. For the client server, there are some data sets and the repo console labs. So let's close this. We have already loaded the configuration from the PCM 600. Let's start the RIA 600 to access the ID from remote. So I have already provided the, the IP address and we can see uh, the main menu of the particular ID that we updated. Let's go to the diagnostic menu, ID status, general, the first point is post update we have to check uh, the configuration is um, loaded correctly and the application is up and running the next thing is maybe you're also curious about the time synchronization if you enable ptp or SNTP, you can also check the time synchronization and the communication is also very important for the, um, the id from the ID to the SCADA system and between IDs for the goose messages on the hardware update um, and other IDs, other modules also should be ready to communicate. And if there is any hints like LDCM is not connected, that's okay for me between IDs. The hints also enable you to know what are the problems. And next, the product identifiers help us to know the right product version and the firmware version serial number, the RM number, and the production date of that particular ID build that we have created from the development team. Okay, next let's go to um, the quick check into the power system. Then we have a global base value. We have a CT and VT ratio, like 220 kV, the primary, and we have a 1000 ampere in the second in the primary for the CT and 1 ampere in the secondary. Let's go to the device link. We have CMC850 and I have already exported the SED file by right clicking the substation and the SED file. We have it here. And before that, we can also do one more thing. We have another update we can able to change the 1650 edition from edition to edition 2.1 so currently you can see already the SL edition of this particular ID model is 
Torah um, Torah six currently having addition to, and the Torah Torah six support addition two point one as well. So you can see, I can choose the addition two point one. You can also downgrade, but I don't recommend to downgrade in the six forty edition because you lose a lot of uh, new features, uh, enhancement part of the latest edition. Let's choose the edition two point one, then migrate. The SEL migration also provide you a report and the task can help you to review what are the change happen in the SEL model of the the specific ID. Once you migrate the SEL model, it's also recommended to load the configuration back to the ID. So the ID understand the, the CID file and we do perform the common write from the PCM600 and we have the latest information and the IDs, also the SEL file as well. The migration report is also ready, you can save it here. You also review later what are the maximum features that's part of that are part of the to that one edition of SCL model. So we do right click and then perform common write to the ID. Then we do export the SCL file from the PCM600 that we can make use of um, in the the test universe for the quick check at least to know the IDs operating correctly um, for um, basic check like measurement for example maybe one of the basic protection depending on the setting that we enabled but in the real project of course we may have a um, OCC file um, to perform many different protection function which has been enabled in the ID and we can run through the, the OCC file once you've successfully updated the firmware to perform the protection testing and using the client zone module you can also perform the control command checks and the measurement checks and the reports and we have a dedicated software like ID code, station code and W to perform advanced automation control application testing and you can right click and then from export and choose the, the location and save and then the name is already there you can overwrite and choose the edition to find one SL edition you can provide the location so here I have the exported file let's take it to another Then we replace it and we have the latest timestamp. Let me open the test universe. Let's create a new document to make it easier. You can always rename and provide the right information in the device setting. You can provide the, this is optional for the digital substation, but you can manage the maximum value, of course. Next is the hardware configuration, which is very important because we're going to use sample value to publish the current and voltages. So I choose one set of current and voltages and choose the configuration. Let me stop the some sample value. Publish. Let me choose the, the SCL file, which has been exported. So this is a the CD file and we're going to use the, the CProtect file as a sample value publisher in terms of the SEL model so I use uh, the Ethernet 1 from the CMC850 and I uncheck the simulation flag on the sample value control block I pick the, uh, the ID and I also choose the sample rate 
80 samples per count and then I go to the stream 1 data set mapping I have to pick the, the current channels to associate from the CMC to the, the SEL model which is a separate file margin in it in this case if you have uh, some 600 for a BB projects or uh, other projects the sample value publisher is some 600 you can always export uh, the whole project and you can bring that sample value publisher information and map it here then you can also add uh, the optional field and other information will be filled from the SAM model and the most important point is to pick the right ID and then make sure that you choose or automatically the field is imported from the SEL file most of the cases and you pick the right Ethernet access point then the data set mapping is done correctly then you select OK the time source we use it PTP utility profile in our case then we are good to go to use uh, quick CMC for example Then you can start the. Before that, I just wanted to make it easier. Currently, the ID that we connected should not have any collected voltages before we start simulating it from the test set. So here let's apply 50 percentage of the CT ratio and then start and here we already see 500 ampere and the phase A, phase B, phase C because that's what we are injecting in the secondary side. If you go to the primary you can see already we are injecting um, this is uh, the primary values from the CMC, quick CMC and you are already seeing the, the right value on the ID side. And you also see under the diagnostic status merging on it, uh, so everything should be okay. There should not be any problem in terms of the, the function group monitoring. The quality also comes from the source and validity is good. So there are advanced analysis you can do in terms of um, monitoring. Um, let's say if you going to if you want to monitor the monitoring there you can see the PTP information as well from the source so we have um, OTMC and p in the network let me go to the PC and we can show you the OTMC and RP. This is our PTP Grandmaster clock uh, in the setup. And you can, you can see here the the clock is already locked. And then this is the PTP configuration. It also supports uh, NTP, and we are using utility profile. And this is the configuration. This is the information that we do see here. In the status side, uh, these are the clock information which we do see from the PTP clock side on the ID. The clock is locked, and then we are good to go. And you can even subscribe the ghost message um, to perform the protection testing, for example. Let's say I stop it, then exit. Let me add a ghost module. Double click, then you can import uh, the SEL file. So, here we need to know the ID in the test. The ID in the test technical key is Q05A1. So, let me unselect everything. This is a Q05A1 and I wanted to subscribe. 
you can also see you can simulate the ghost messages from the CMC test set let me subscribe like protection start like from PTRC an operated signal then I already subscribed from here let me open the quick CMC and the ID and the test should have uh, at least work run protection function so this is a non-directional work run and the setting value is um, 180 percentage of the IBS that means uh, 1800 ampere in the primary let's go to the Phase A, point one, then I increase another phase. Okay, let me put for this trip signal as a feedback and then start publishing. And here we should see the feedback as well on the right side. And then we should also see the disturbance record. There was one disturbance record triggered. Okay, let's inject um, the step. Let me put in the secondary. To make it easier, so we are already reaching the current here 1500, 1800. Okay, got the trip and um, start feedback to the CMC. So, these are you can quickly check, but you, of course, you have uh, the OCC file which you can make use of it to test the advanced protection testing and you can get the disturbance record for the work run start and when it is start you can also receive um, the protection trip information from ID scout the complete files you can get directly over MMS because we already enabled the update is required here but I can reach the ID at least from my PC so this is the ID and the test you can just select the, the files and this is the latest um, complete file you can download it you can open it in the The different complete viewer like sync synchro event or or wave in ABB like you can also read the disturbance record from the PCM 600 itself so there are different type of tools available the market you can able to use it like disturbance handling and you can perform the read um, the recording information to collect the, the latest dispense record that are available in the ID. <clears throat> so 
so this is it recording information from the ID you can download it and you can save it locally and you can export it to perform the pre file and post file analysis this is the short report which you can get it in the ABB short format and you can also open in the wave in by right clicking it with the wave in Itachi you can enable the the digital channels to know exactly where the preferred when the, the ID got tripped exactly and the our face we um, ramp the current and then there you can see the, the trip information so that's all in this video take care bye bye